Hi, my name is Ryan Israel. I'm a tech lead with Juniper Network Certification Program, and this learning bite is on Chaser Cluster Interface Monitoring. Interface monitoring allows the device to monitor the health of the interfaces belonging to a redundancy group. So, therefore, if that interface fails, uh, you could, you know, fail over from node zero to node one, or or vice versa. Um, each interface monitor can be assigned a weight of zero to two fifty five. Uh, the weight is detected from the threshold of the redundancy group when an interface fails. Each uh, redundancy group has a threshold of 255 and failover is triggered when that threshold reaches zero. So if you have one interface that you're monitoring and you set it with the value, the weight of 255, when that interface fails, it's going to, threshold is going to reach zero. So that 255 is going to be deducted from the threshold of 255 and and then it will cause the trigger to fail over. If you configure it for less than 255, say 254, it's not going to reach that zero to cause the failover. So one interface, that one interface monitoring failing is not going to cause a trigger. So you'd have to have multiple interfaces um, configured um, to cause that failover. Here's a uh, configuration example. We have uh, two interfaces on node zero and then uh, say two interfaces, the same two interfaces on node one. And so if in this case with um, 255 um, configured for the weight, if 006 fails, it'll fail over to node one. And uh, or vice versa, if, if 008 fails, then it will fail over to, to node one. In this uh, configuration, if uh, node one is the uh, primary, say it already failed over once and then you resolve the issue, and node one is now the primary, if uh, 506 or 508, either one of those um, fail would cause the uh, failover back to node zero. Here are some uh, examples of weight that you would uh, configure if you want for multiple interfaces to cause the, uh, the failover to occur. 255 for one interface. In this range, at least 128 or as high as 254 would cause, uh, it would take you know, two interfaces to fail to cause a, the um, trigger and you can see the other examples as well. One thing I don't show here is the redundant interface. You could apply that interface as an interface that you monitor and give it a weight of 255. So if that ref or you know redundant interface fails, um, it will cause it to uh, fail over to the other node. There's also some other options I don't show uh, under the ref interface, like uh, uh, minimum links that you could use in combination with this to kind of give you the same uh, the same effect. But anyway, I'm, we're just concentrating on the uh, interface monitoring with this learning byte. Uh, so on to our uh, topology. So um, this is a simple um, chassis cluster uh, topology that we're using for our example. SRX1 is node 0, SRX2 is node 1, they're both uh, SRX 240s, and um, these are the interfaces that we're going to be monitoring for this uh, example. So let's uh, go ahead into the CLI. Okay, we're logged into SRX1, the uh, node 0 of the uh, chassis cluster, and the uh, current chassis cluster status is node 0 is the uh, primary. And the actual chassis cluster config um, is uh, the same as the um, the config example I showed you. The the only difference I added preempt um, for our testing here so that it it will fail back over to uh, to node zero um, once um, resolve the issue. Also, the uh, here's the interface setup. All these interfaces are, are part of a redundant uh, interface one and uh, the redundancy group that we configured under chassis cluster is applied to, to the redundancy interface one. Um, and currently all the interfaces um, are up. So, so we'll go ahead and, uh, so based on the current configuration, any of these two interfaces, 06 or, or 01, any one of them goes down, it'll fail over. So let's go ahead and bring down one of the interfaces. All 
All right, commit will take uh, about 45 seconds or so. Okay, the uh, commit has uh, completed. Let's, let's look at the interface. Okay, the interface is down and the chassis status. And now you can see that it's uh, that caused the um, fail over to node one. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll put that back and we'll change the um, weight value so that it takes both interfaces. Okay, so that's ready. We'll go ahead and commit that and put it back to uh, its original uh, node zero is the uh, primary state. Okay, now okay, the interfaces are all up. And node zero is a primary, so let's go ahead and uh, disable the first interface. All right, now that the uh, first interface has been disabled, so six is down and eight still up. Let's look at the chassis cluster status. And node zero is still primary, so let's go ahead and uh, disable the other interface. Okay, now that the commit is done, um, looking at both interfaces, they're both down now, and the chassis cluster status is fell over to the uh, node one. So uh, this concludes uh, Learning Byte. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.